morning, everybody. We always say how sick kids' hospital really is a world-class hospital. They do such good, and it's unimaginable for parents I've to have used a sick child. It's been, you know, to go in there, the service they do, and, the, and what they provide for your kid, and how good it feels to be in there because you know they're in great hands, yeah. is a wonderful experience. But Lauren, Lauren Howe is here because you recently yeah. had a sleepover yeah. to see what it feels like to be in the shoes of parents at sick kids. Yeah. So myself, Fred Van Vliet, and Kevin and Astor from Bachelor in Paradise were the first three individuals to go through this new Airbnb. See to what it's like, even in the smallest sense. And it really is Airbnb, right? Yeah. You actually can. Yep. So they converted, they made a mock room. This isn't actually in their ICU unit, so it's a mock Airbnb to try to put yourself in the shoes of what the environment is like. I mean, obviously you can't understand what it's truly like to go through that experience, but this is the closest I think someone can come. So this was a three hour period and we know families are there for weeks, months, sometimes yeah. even years. So let's yeah. take a look at what that three hour session was like. This should only have one patient, one family in this room. There ought to be a space for the family to rest and have some privacy within the room itself. This is crazy though that it's, it's this many. Just, like even if it was just two beds and a curtain, like that's still not enough. Yeah. Every day we do miracles here at Sick Kids. The amazing care takes place. But our staff are working their best in spite of the environment, in spite of the hospital. If you have a sick child, that's enough of a burden on its own. But then to be, you know, scrunched up against their bed with a crash cart sitting beside you and an IV cart touching your right side and you're just trying to kind of connect with your child while listening to beeping and sounds from every other child in the room, um, I'm just blown away by how lack of privacy and space you get probably during the hardest thing you'll ever have to go through. What we knew we wanted to do was um, invite people behind the curtain. And what we realized is that if you live it, you understand it. Well, the price point actually is around uh, $2,400 per person uh, uh, for the night. And that is based on about the, the average cost of a night stay in an ICU in a teaching hospital like SickKids. Is there anything that surprised you the most of this simulation? Well, we do this every day to practice for real events, but we don't do it every day with people who are not healthcare providers. And to see the raw emotion on the faces of all the participants, uh, you could tell that everybody felt this. Everybody felt that this was real, and it is real. It went silent in here, everybody watching that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Normally people are chatting, everybody was watching that going Powerful. on. Powerful. Yeah. You just said it's exhausting. We saw the headsets, which is right now the solution that they're using to diffuse the sound because it's such cramped quarters. And that, actually, it's even, it's more so used for privacy because it's such close quarters. If you need to deliver important, private, personal information to a family, mm -hmm. they make uh, the other families in the room wear those headphones with static noise happening in the background. I mean, I, I can't imagine going through a very intimate moment and thinking that's the closest thing you'll get to privacy in that situation. And, and having that go on for days and days and weeks on end. Exactly. Now with the, with the Airbnb, you can actually book that room. What happens with the money? We saw that the $2,300 a night for a person. What happens with that money? Where is it? Of course it goes to SickKids. Now, and this is a part of the entire campaign and initiative. This is the largest fundraising in Canadian healthcare history. $1.3 billion is what they're trying to raise. And I mean, that number, some people are talking about how, well, how can it be so expensive to spend a night there? Yeah. That's how much it costs and to we, run that unit. The operating costs. Well, and we Absolutely. also have some of the best, ho we have, that is one of the best kids' hospitals in the world. 100%. And we want to keep it that way, and we are blessed to have it in our city. So to want to support that, I, I, people shouldn't see a problem with that. And you Absolutely. were saying too, Lauren, Fred Van Vliet, we know is a proud papa, and he, this really hit home. Yeah. yeah, they had a simulated baby in there that they actually used this to train in circumstances. And at one point, you know, they would, doctors would come rushing in to care for the baby under a seizure mm -hmm. situation. And I just looked over at Fred, and you just see him gripping his knees how close to home that's hitting him and his friend who also had two kids in the room. It was very, very, very powerful, to and say I, the least. I know you've been documenting this on social media and you have parents writing you saying thank you for sharing our stories in this capacity with these simulations. Absolutely, and if anyone feels like following along with the hashtag, you know, sick kids versus, you can see and read these stories for themselves. I mean, especially, in a bit, these, these are real scenarios. 
that this entire simulation is based off of. How are they doing with the fundraising? I think they're, they're closing in on a billion, are they not? I'm not entirely sure on the Last exact stance, but getting... hopefully we can help them make it the whole way there. Yes. Be very nice. If, if somebody wants to step up with $400 million, it would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you head well on over. It. It's buildthenewsickkids.ca, so I think mm -hmm. that's the direct link to get to this fundraising site. And thank you so much for bringing us Absolutely. this powerful story. It's so important to yeah. hit home. It's, it's, it's hard to go through. You hear sick kids and you just know, you think about how old and how new it is when you walk in the atrium, but that atrium's 30 years old. Right? Wow. It's I older remember, than the internet. Remember when that opened. Oof. Yeah. So they're time for a new one. Yeah. Absolutely. Lauren, thank you very much. Thank more, you guys. More on BT coming up after the break.